With the rollover of the calendar into 2021 comes the beginning of the phase-in of the new excess soils regulation in the province. Today, we touch on some of the key aspects of that regulation and what contractors need to watch for in their contracts as these new regulations begin to take hold. January 1st marked the official commencement of the new provincial excess soils regulation. It will be phased in over two main parts. The first came online January 1st of this year and includes all the new rules governing soil reuse. The second and perhaps more important part for contractors arrives in January of 2022 and will include new requirements for testing, tracking, and registering the movement of all excess soils to and from your job site. These changes represent a monumental shift from how excess soils have historically been managed. Think of it as similar to the shift that occurred for health and safety around core certification. This regulation sets clearly defined rules for project owners, general contractors, and subs. And while the process will create a new administrative burden and increase expense on the front end of projects, it is expected to ultimately increase soil reuse on site and ensure an even playing field in contracts for how excess soils are managed. Beginning in 2022, as part of the project design process, municipalities will be required to provide a comprehensive soils report as part of their tender packages. This report will identify soil volumes, composition, past uses, and contaminants to help contractors provide more accurate pricing for the management of these soils. Additionally, municipalities will have to register and report on the movement of all soils to the Ministry of Environment for any ongoing projects. For contractors, the new rules will be very rigid. Beginning in 2022, contractors will need to hire their own soils consultant as part of the regulation for maintaining and reporting on the monitoring, testing, and tracking of all excavated soil leaving their sites. Additionally, contractors or their subs will have to use an electronic tracking system for their soil hauling that will be able to demonstrate the delivery of soil along a prescribed haul route without deviation. This process is expected to be costly at the outset. We are encouraging all members to be sure they review and appropriately understand the implications of these changes in their contracts. Where we are continuing to see variance is around reuse and disposal site selection. Some municipalities will continue to rely on the contractor as part of their bid to identify soil deposit sites, as is the current norm. Other municipalities are choosing to identify their own soil reuse or disposal sites as part of the project design phase. Given that project owners now hold ultimate liability for soil being excavated from their sites, many municipalities believe it is in their best interest to identify disposal sites to reduce both their risk and cost. We are encouraging municipalities to adopt this approach because it brings greater certainty to the bidding process particularly in the early days of this new regulation when no contractors has experience bidding this item. Municipalities also have a much greater window during the design phase to properly identify a disposal site and the corresponding testing procedures versus a contractor who may only have a four to six week window during the bidding process to arrange. It's important to note that the big operational changes in the regulations, the testing, tracking, and site registration, are all set to come online in January of 2022. Nevertheless, municipalities are adjusting their specifications right now. Many are even instituting these new requirements on contracts this year. So it's important to pay close attention to these provisions in your contracts. In particular, the hiring of a soils QP, the required monthly reporting on soil volumes and testing, and the tracking of soil hauling from a source site to a receiving site. And during your tender practice meetings, Make sure to discuss how the respective municipalities plan to address these new regulations, particularly as it relates to the identification of the reuse or disposal sites, and how it's in the municipality's best interest to include that information in their tender documents. If you have any questions, of course reach out to our office for more detail. And check back in with this channel in mid-February, where we'll have a more detailed video of what you need to know from Kim Logan at GEMS. And in the meantime, stay safe and healthy.